Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're gonna continue with the uh, texturing of our ring and uh, <laughs> uh, let me show you, let me show you because this is funny. I was almost done with the uh, with the UV, I was explaining and doing all the whole thing and uh, I realized that uh, my music is playing on the background and on the OBS setup I, I had the desktop turn on so I was recording the desktop music as well and I don't think that's that much of a deal but um, we might get copyright struck and that's not good. So yeah, so let's go back here. Uh, I'm gonna go real quick over the like preparation of what I did here and then I'm gonna do the UVs again which should be fairly fairly simple. So as you can see here on the viewport we have uh, the high poly right here and I renamed all of the parts of the high poly into uh, or I gave them a name that's easy to recognize. That's very important. So I called this ring body, ring jaw, ring jewel. And to all of those elements I added an underscore high to the to the name because we're going to be using that flag to uh, do a special option inside of substance painter a lot of people have a hard time doing the bakes inside of substance painter and inside of other softwares and there's like some common mistakes that people make one of them is naming convention if your names are not properly done you might have some issues the second one is you need to make sure that your low poly and that your high poly are pretty much in the exact same place. If they're not in the exact place, then the bakes won't work. Because remember, when you bake, what happens is you have your low poly element and it shoots out information into, into like the world and it gathers whatever it finds um, from that information, right? So if the object's not on top of it, then it will have a very hard time finding that information and you won't get a clean bake. Now, the reason why we're also doing this right here, like we're separating the, the ring into three different pieces, is because we want to be able to, if at any point we need to, animate these things and have them like levitate or move or whatever. Um, otherwise, everything would be just like a single object. So as you can see, all of the high polys have their own name and now all of the low polys have their own name as well. So I'm gonna grab all of the low polys. Let me isolate them real quick. I'm gonna grab them all. And first thing I'm gonna do to clean our UVs, we're gonna say UV and we're gonna do a camera base mapping which right now it's like taking a picture of the UVs and uh, depending on where your camera is, that's the picture you're gonna get. So you can see that this is pretty much the picture that we have right here. And we're gonna use that as, a, as our building blocks or as our starting platform to start like cutting the edges here. So I'm gonna start with the jaw here. Very easy cut. Um, I'm gonna use my UV, 3D cut and show UV tool. I'm gonna go to the border. So for instance, that border right there, that border right there, and then just follow the border all the way to the top. Continue it here all the way there, just double clicking. And as you can see, the edge loop is pretty much like marking itself. And there we go. So now if we grab this guy and go UV, UV editor, and we'll go into UV here, we can press control U and that's gonna unfold it. And as you can see, it gives us a very nice clean unfold, no distortion, everything working pretty, pretty nicely. The seam is also hidden, so people won't be able to notice the seam as easily. That's a, a plus. Let's grab now the jewel, this one right here. And for this one, I'm gonna use same thing, my 3D uh, cut and sew UV tool. And as you can see, the, the topology here is not perfect. I actually used automatic retopology for this one to save a little bit of time. And um, I'm just gonna like click one line and just, just start clicking and trying to connect this line to the other side, like trying to get like half of this object, see? So as you can see, we go here, here, and like that line right there. That's it. So that's going to cut my, my jewel in half. And since this is not a super, super important element, it's not going to deform or anything, this should work perfectly fine. Control U, Control L, and there we go. We have two halves. There's not a lot of distortion. Things are looking good. It's perfect. This, this, this will work. Finally, this one, this one's a little bit more tricky because as you can see, we have a lot of different shapes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, use my 3D cut and sew UV tool, and we're going to cut the inside of the ring out like this. That's going to create a nice little uh, loop on the inside and we need to cut that loop otherwise the unfold won't work remember unfold we always want to go into 2d uh patterns right so in this case we want to create like this nice long uh, rectangular pattern after we do that i'm actually going to go here to where the tentacles start and i'm also going to divide those because i want to have those like this clean section of the ring be a separate piece uh, from the uvs than the others now you can see here that we have an angle that's uh something i didn't notice before this one's an angle, it's uh, five sides, no problem. Even if we're already working on UVs, I can just add a triangle right there. And that's gonna just like <laughs> remove the angle. So as you can see, that, that's working perfectly fine. Um, so let's keep working, 3D, uh, so 3D cut and sew UV tool. 
And now for this one, the skull, you can see there's a lot of volume here. So my best bet is to actually cut that volume out, right? So kind of like create a cut that goes down here. And then I'm going to go up like this and around the tentacle like this so that we can separate the area. And here's where having clean retopology, like what we did on the last video, which by the way, if you haven't seen it, is there on the channel. Uh, it's part uh, three, I believe. Um, this will allow us to really quickly and really easily cut all of these pieces. I'm also going to cut this piece just to keep this as a separate uh, element. And there we go. Now, the only thing I need to do is say UV editor, grab all of this guys, hit control U, control L. And as you can see, everything is looking quite, quite nice. Finally, what we need to do is we need to grab all of the low polys and play a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, like Tetris. We're going to select everything and hit control L. So that all of them fit in the same uh, like uh, element with the proper proportions. The control L right now for me is working because I'm using this thing called uh, layout. And on the layout options, I am made sure to select this shell prescaling preserved 3D ratios. So that means that it will always follow the 3D ratios of the objects here. I did miss a couple of points. So let me just cut and sew those. I might need to do another UV shell here. Control U, Control L. And there we go. See that we, we even get a better better space, a little bit more resolution because the, the island was, was cut a little bit more. Uh, and that's it. So our low poly is ready to be baked down into, or the high poly is ready to be baked down into the low poly. So here's the process. I'm going to grab the high poly and all of the elements, including the group. And I'm going to say file, export selection. And onto our rings, uh, death ring here, right here. I'm going to call this death ring underscore high. And then very important, very, very important. I want to I want all of those guys to have the same material. So I'm going to grab all of those guys, right click assign existing material, and I'm just going to assign the lamber one, just basic material, no need to go fancy, just the basic material, and I'm going to say file, export selection. And we're going to export it. In this case, I'm not going to use any like flag, it's just going to be death ring, because that's the low I know that the, this death ring is going to be the low poly. Now we jump into substance painter. And um, yeah, Substance Meter is an amazing software. I, I wasn't too keen about Adobe buying it. And uh, yes, there's been a couple of like bad experiences, um, but it's it's fine. I mean, it's still it's still the industry standard, one of the industry standards. So, so we're gonna, so let's go 4K, 4K, let's go really, really high. That's gonna make it look super, super cool. Let's go for a death ring and we select this one right here. Now, super, super easy and fast way to do bakes. If you follow all of my instructions properly and uh, you created your high poly, low poly and everything, you can go here to texture set settings, go to the bake mesh maps, select the size, let's go 4K and select the high poly. There we go. So this will bake it down, but it won't do the division between like the jaw, the jewel and the ring. Uh, it will just bake everything down into everything. And we want to keep them separate. So the way we can keep them separate is we're going to go down here. Uh, anti aliasing let's give it a 2 by 2 And on the match, we're going to select this thing called by mesh name. And as you can see, here's where the secret lies. As you can see, here's where you have the low poly mesh suffix and low uh, high poly mesh suffix. So this is what um, what you're telling Substance to look for. So it's going to look for the jewel low, jewel, jewel high, and it would only bake the things that are like, appropriate with those elements back into the other piece. So yeah, that's it. Low and high. That's the that's the one you want. And you want to do this in three places. Ambient occlusion, here where it says self-occlusion, only same mesh name. And finally, thickness, self-occlusion, only same mesh name. In case you want to do it. This only works if you're going to be like animating things that you're going to be like separating. The best example I always give is imagine a character with like a big necklace on the front and that necklace is going to be like moving around. You can't bake that necklace's ambient occlusion or thickness into the character because when the necklace's, necklace moves, you're going to see like a dark spot on the skin and that's not something that you want. So those would be the kind of things that you would um, make sure that um, ambient occlusion and thickness are with self-occlusion, only same mesh name. And that's it. We just bake selected textures and, and we're ready to go. And my cell phone is ringing. Who's calling? It's spam. Don't you guys hate spam calls? There we go. So yeah, you can see it baking. Now I did use a two by two subsampling and that's gonna like soften the textures a little bit. Should give us a very nice and, and cool effect. You can see how the, the jewel is not getting any shadows. That's important as well. That's because we use the, the only same mesh name, uh, occlusion pattern of things. 
And uh, yeah, let's just, I'm gonna pause real quick, wait for this to finish and I'll show you guys the result. There we go. So uh, now the bake is finished. As you can see, it looks pretty, pretty nice. Look at that ambient occlusion. All of the de little details, the rock texture, everything is there. Now, yes, of course, this guy, since it's a low poly, we're gonna have some issues. Like you can see a little bit of uh, normal mapping, like distortion right there. Um, I saw some like weird bakes like on that specific area right there. But imagine this is gonna be on a game, right? Like these are not the kind of things that you're gonna be worrying that much about. Now, one thing I am noticing is this points right here, those ones right there, and those ones right there. That means that the depth of my rays was not big enough. So remember the little example where I mentioned that the low poly will shoot rays out? The distance of the rays are actually here on the texture set settings. This thing called, um, here on the normal maps or in common, is this max frontal distance and max rear distance. So if, if you get this sort of like black spots, that means that you were not able to hit the highest pick and it just clipped and that's bad. So in this case, I'm just gonna increase this a little bit more here on the max frontal distance and a little bit more on the, uh, on the rear distance. Let's give it another go. You immediately can see that now the texture is fixed, like we are not getting any clipping. So I know that this thing is gonna bake uh, perfectly fine. I am seeing a little bit of a clipping right there, but you don't wanna go like super, super high on those distances because another thing that could happen is you're gonna start catching things and details from other parts of the model, okay? So let me, let me wait for this thing to run and I'll show you the result. There we go. So the baking is done. Took about like 30, 40 seconds, but I I, I, like, I don't like adding that extra time for you guys. Uh, and there we go. As you can see now, all of the details that we have, the logo, the little like marks, the bandages, everything is baked into the, into the ring. Even like the things that we forgot to erase are there. And as you can see, we don't really have any weird like a normal map uh, effects. I, I can't see like any specific area where the normal map is acting or behaving weirdly. Uh, everything seems to be looking perfectly fine. So this is something that you could find in the game, like no problems. Um, so now let's do a quick texturing and uh, let's look for some like old gold. Always, always look for reference. That's the kind of thing that we wanna make sure that we get right. And uh, yeah, like this ancient coins, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. Now gold is a very interesting material because uh, it does rust, like you can get this sort of things, but only if the if the gold is like made with something extra, like other kinds of metals, I think, because it, gold is a very, very pure like element. So it's it's very weird to have like a lot of like weird stuff. But uh, yeah, let's go here. Uh, we can start, I don't like using this gold pure, to be honest, because I feel like it's a little bit too, I don't know, gold. <laughs> um, so I prefer using this brass actually. The brass, I don't know why, it, it, it might seem like neat picky, but it's it's something like slightly different that I like. Uh, some people like to go with like a really saturated, like orangey gold color. That's fake, that's not something that you would expect. So we're gonna start with this brass pure. And then here on the roughness, we're gonna increase the roughness a little bit because we don't want this to be as shiny. So probably something like that. Now, as I mentioned, you're not gonna get rust. Like, I don't think you get like, like rust gold rust i think it's very difficult like you get this sort of like things but it's not rust and even there there's like the answer uh does not rust nor will it tarnish so yeah there you go so yeah uh, however does th that does not mean that we can't use some rust to add a little bit more detail so in this case i'm gonna add a rust layer i'm gonna add a black mask and i'm gonna add a generator we're gonna add a dirt generator just to add like depth to the whole thing I'm definitely gonna get rid of the tr the grunge amount here, so we only get like that sort of dirt on the on the inner parts right there. And one thing I might wanna do is instead of playing around with the roughness, I'm gonna go to the roughness channel and I'm gonna re reduce the roughness quite a bit so that the rust is not actually like contributing to any like pattern. And then if we go back to the base color, we can actually actually change the color and select the same like gold color that we have here. And just make it a little bit like orangey and maybe darker. And that's gonna give us some interesting details. See that? So it doesn't look like like actual rust, but it's gonna make it look like really, really, really cool. And we can at any point go back to the dirt options and just like play around with the dirt, right? Now, if you are fans of this channel, you probably know my little secret, my little trick, which is to add a fill layer and add a clouds uh, effect or any sort of like element here. Let's play a little bit with the contrast and maybe a little bit with the scale and then multiply this against the generator so that we have a very nice, like natural looking uh, layer right there. There we go. And at any point we can just like reduce this effect. I I'm even thinking about just like removing the whole like roughness layer. 
I'm not sure if it's really helping though. Yeah, that looks that looks interesting. That looks nice. Uh, another very common thing for for gold is the um, like the metal edge wear, or not just for gold for any metal. So I'm gonna use like an aluminum black mask generator, and let's do a metal edge wear, so that we get like the sharp, nice little effects. This one I like to have as linear dodge, and then very very low. There we go. So now we got that sort of like effect. Now of course this would have to be yellowish but it's gonna be like a little bit wider than the yellow, right? So it's tricky, this one's tricky. I'm even thinking about, there we go, trying to find like a like a proper amount. It is difficult, it is difficult to, to add this sort of like effect to gold. There you go, I, I might get rid of the roughness. I think that looks a little bit nicer. Now, for the stone, uh, uh, we don't have a, I mean, we do have glass shaders here instead of substance, but that's more, it has more to do with the material. So I'm just going to add like a, like a fill layer here. Let's add a black mask and just like use polygon fill to fill this guy in. And let's just add like a red color. So we're going to shade that as a, as a gemstone in the, what's the word, in the, in Maya, in Arnold. Now, the bandage, I do want to have the bandage be a different material. So I'm thinking about, like, this cobalt doesn't look half bad. Even this nickel looks interesting. So let's go here. I'm going to say add black mask. And now here's the deal. It is going to be a little bit difficult to, to, to make sure to, like, only hit the bandage. Is, is there a way in which we can make it a little bit easier for ourselves? And the answer is yes. So if you're watching, if you've been watching all the way until this point, congratulations, because you're just about to see one of my secret trips, tips and tricks, which is the ID map. So I'm gonna go to my high poly right here, and I'm gonna select the whole object. And if we right click and go into face mode, you're gonna see that we can actually select the faces that made out of these bandages because of the decimation, remember? So I'm gonna select the whole object. I'm gonna say edit mesh, or sorry, mesh display, apply color, and we're gonna apply like a really obvious color, like red, and here, apply. So now all of the object right here, it's gonna be, oops, should be red. Mm, why am I not seeing it red? Huh, that's really weird that we're not seeing it, right? Usually we would see the display here, but for some reason, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's because of the of the material that I have assigned, but that's fine. Um, it should be red now. Like when I hit apply, all of the vertices now have this red color. And if we go into the bandages now, I can select another color like green, for instance, and hit apply. And now those vertices will have that information. So now I can grab this guy again, say file, export selection, export it again. And if we go into substance, we can rebake, but only the ID map. And if my calculations are right, we should see the colors. Okay, we're only seeing the red color, which is okay, but I'm expecting to see the green color, and for some reason we did not see that. That should be it. Okay, let's try again. Because that's, that's going to be the easiest way for us to like mask out the uh, the ID elements of an object. Let's try again. Huh, that's really weird. Okay, I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. Just uh, a little bit unorthodox, but it should work. I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna say mesh separate to separate them. And I'm gonna grab this three guys, Let's say mesh display, apply color. And we should be applying the green color now. Let's wait for this to process. Hmm. There we go. It's really weird. Like I, again, usually you would see the colors. Maybe it's because of the of the material. Let me assign like a basic Lambert one. There we go. So it was a material. So now, as you can see, the bandages are green. I'm gonna grab everything again, combine them into a single object. Let's the history, face transformation. As you can see, the ID maps are working perfectly fine now. Change the name again. Make sure that the name is, is set properly to ring underscore high. 
you should of course do this way before this, but I'm showing you that even though we have finished all of these sections, you can always go back and, and fix stuff. There we go. So now if we bake again, just the ID map, you should see that we get, oh, actually I made a mistake here. On the ID map, you're gonna change from material color to vertex color. Always forget about that one. And there we go. So now we have a green mask there that we just need to access. And the easiest way to access it is, um, I'm gonna go here. Oh, what's this? Uh, the nickel pure. I'm gonna go here, right click, and we're gonna say add color selection. Pick a color, select the green color, and there we go. So now that little section right there is gonna be uh, like a silvery. And that way we have a very, very nice effect here with the whole thing. Now the silver, I would expect the silver to, to rust a little bit more. So I am gonna add a little bit more roughness there. And one thing we can do is we can just push this thing all the way to the top. And that way we're gonna be affecting everything. And that looks a little bit better. Maybe this is a little bit too, too light. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And maybe it's a little bit too rough. So let's bring the roughness a little bit down. So it's a little bit shinier. And there we go, I like it, I like that. I think the brass is looking a little bit weird though. There we go. Now, one last trick that I wanna show you guys is we can actually use other things to add like a little bit of, uh, um, like more texture detail to the whole thing. So for instance, I have this like rotten wood material right here. And I know m most of you might not have this material, but if you grab any material that has some interesting effects, even like this concrete bear, for instance, and you just drop it on top of everything, what you can do is you can deselect metal, the roughness height and, and stay only with color and then use your blending modes to, to change the way the color is affecting the object. Look at that, look at that amazing like effect that we get here with the, uh, like that's difference note, that's fine. And then we can do something like a black mask and again like a generator, and that's like a dirt generator. And that way we're gonna get like a very interesting effect. I'm not saying this is what we're gonna be going for, I'm just saying that there's so many things that you can find with this element right here. I'm gonna use an overlay, overlay usually works pretty well. Um, well, let me see if there's anything else that, ooh, that looks interesting. I, I like the linear burn, and then what we can do is just like move this thing all the way down, and that way we can get some interesting colors and tones that will be pretty much impossible to get any other way. You can also do this with height information. So for instance, again, with this rotten wood, I can just grab this here. That's gonna add like a lot of like stuff in there, but if I just turn everything off except for the, for the height map, or the normal map in this case, I can get like those fibers. And maybe, maybe I can add those fibers somewhere. I'm not saying again that we're gonna use it. I'm just saying that you can you can try things. Like for instance, this middle moss cover. It's another like a material from Substance. And uh, it's gonna have like a lot of like stuff in it. And again, if we turn everything off and we just leave the normal map, it gives like this sort of like grainy effect, right? And we can go to the normal section and just lower this thing like quite, quite down. It's kind of like adding an extra texture there that we didn't need to texture inside of uh, inside of uh, ZBrush or anything. Now, I definitely wanna like add a little bit more depth to the whole thing. And I know again that gold does not, uh, like the, the web page says it does not rust, but I'm still gonna add another like rust layer here with the dirt, dirt patch. And I'm gonna make a an overlay so that it's darker. There we go. Because that kind of like this kind of stuff looks really, really cool to me, I would say. So yeah, that's it, guys. This is it. This is the the final ring. Let's go to IRA uh, just to see a, a little uh, a little preview of how this thing is gonna look. Not bad, huh? Not freaking bad. So yeah, I'm gonna stop the video right here, guys. We still have a couple of other things that we can do, uh, but I don't want this to run like super, super long. We're gonna do one more video but there's a special surprise tomorrow. So don't forget to tune in tomorrow because I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of Marvelous Designer. We're gonna do, I don't know, like a, like a nice little scene for this ring uh, so we can render a, a very nice like cinematic piece, okay? So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you very much, all of you for your support. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, comments. Comments are always, always welcome. And uh, let me know what you think so far. So that's it for now. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.